we're looking at a very dangerous next few days. There's been a lot of talks of Iran going into Israel, readying weapons, and we'll go over reports of that. Now, there's been some stories saying, oh, no, they're not going to do it now. They're going to hold up because the U.S. has kind of put their two cents in saying that they would help defend Israel. Then there was some other reports saying that, yes, U.S. uses all these bases all the way around Israel in the Middle East, other Muslim countries, and they have stated, you're not going to shoot from here. So now we've got a situation where it's almost a standoff. Iran is still using proxies even today into Israel. So what's going to happen in the next, what, 48 hours, the next two or three days, like they're warning? I don't know. Let's jump into it and how this could be the start of something huge. Hey guys, welcome to the Max. Thank you so very much for being here today. If you are new to the channel, go down here, press subscribe, ring the bell, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down, that's all right. But let us know what you think about the content of the channel. Our goal is to talk about things that are dealing with the way that we try to raise our families in a safe and sustainable way while prepping, homesteading, and of course, just having wisdom and common sense. That's one thing we're lacking so much of, I think, in America. now. Before we get started, remember to follow me on X or Twitter if you can. We're going to be doing a giveaway. This giveaway is over hundreds of dollars worth of value. It costs nothing to just follow us over there. We're going to be talking about that in the next coming days of actually what we're actually going to be giving away. So please, if you haven't yet, go follow us over there. Also, subscribe here, follow us here, and both of those will be entered into a giveaway. I can't wait to be able to give that away. There's not a lot of followers of us on Twitter, so you have good chances to win this. So go over there, subscribe. Now, let's talk about today's video. There's an article from Zero Hedge that says, Iran readies over a hundred cruise missiles for possible strike against Israel. Multiple European airlines have canceled all flights in and to and from Iran, and flight trackers have also indicated that skies above Israel are clear to civilian aviation. We don't want to be in the realm of this area, and I'm glad that flights are doing that just to make sure that everybody is safe as possible. Now, what that does, though, is it heightens the alert for Israel. Now, Israel has had a lot of people panic buying, a lot of people trying to stock up on goods because they see that this is an imminent threat. Now, there was just a report, I think yesterday, stating, well, Iran has put the halt on doing this. They're not gonna they're not going to attack. They're hey, it's not imminent anymore because Americans' involvement. Okay. I heard that too, and I said, well, that's good. At least, at least with just stating that we're gonna be there, we may not have a an attack. Now also Iran has he has, they have actually introduced the fact of, hey, we could see nuclear threats here. Now, I don't, you know, we've heard for a long time that Iran does not have that capabilities, that they're working towards it. Well, now they're starting to threaten it. Now, here, let me, let me explain something to you, though. Guess what happened? All of a sudden, Russia shoots off a missile, and it's, I guess, goes, you know, over the spot it's not supposed to go over, but ultimately, it went towards the Middle East. That almost caused a panic of, why is Russia shooting a missile, you know, intercontinental missile that shouldn't have been going that way towards that area were they trying to you know start something I, I don't know what I'm saying though is there is, is such a small little window of a spark that could cause something major in Iran and Israel situation now Iran did say that they're not going in yet they did warn of this weekend the next 48 hours however what they've done is they've allowed of course Hezbollah in, in Lebanon they've allowed Hamas and they've allowed of course their proxies to keep shooting missiles into Israel so Israel is still getting bombarded but Iran has not just ultimately said it's them yet even though everybody knows it is it says a second Hezbollah volley of missiles along with the first it's on its way towards the Iron Dome it said just as predicted hours ago the Iron Dome has been overwhelmed but it's trying to prepare for, for Iran's retaliation it says this was speculated that these are the prelude of the attack from Iran meaning they're going to use their proxies to just ultimately hit the dome ultimately use all the defense that they can to survive and then Iran was going to come in and just blast Israel that was what this speculation was now is that true is that false we don't know however just like us if we get a warning that someone is is threatening us for instance last week we had a warning of a tornado coming through our area now you know we we've been ravaged with storms i know everyone in the south has but what did we do it didn't matter that the tornado was going to hit in my farm 
We prepared because it was in the proximity. It was in the area. So we prepared. So what I'm trying to say is these people are not doing wrong. And we're not talking about, well, is it going to happen or not? It's the fact that we have to prepare just in case it does. So Israel is on high alert for this attack, just like I was with the tornado. And then the tornado did not hit here. It hit about 30 or 40 miles above us. That means we were safe, but it didn't cause us not to prepare to make sure we had things ready to go just in case we lost power, just in case something happened, or just in case we had to get to a tighter, smaller spot in our home to be safe from this tornado. Well, they're doing the same thing. They're starting to prepare and all of a sudden they're starting to panic by. Israel is seeing massive loads of people going to banks, going to groceries, and getting the stuff out to keep their family safe. Another update said that Israel hospitals have been put on high alert and on home command awaiting for an imminent attack. The U.S. officials told Axios, Iran has sent a message to the U.S. and several Arab countries saying if they interfere, U.S. will also be attacked in their bases. Now, are we, are we seeing early signs of, of this War Three kind of mentality and talk of another major regional war in the Middle East? Now, we talked the other day about this. We've always had issues with Iraq and Afghanistan and other areas, proxies. When you talk about Iran and Israel, though, that's the biggest players. Other than Saudi Arabia, you're talking about the biggest players in the Middle East. What are we going to see? It, what, what actually is going to happen? Now, the crazy thing is Saudi Arabia had a better relationship with Israel than they actually did with Iran. But with Hamas tax and all that went on, Saudi Arabia is almost standing back now. So I'm anxious to see where they actually land on this, if they're going to support Israel or Iran. They've been meeting with Iran. Uh, most likely, they'll probably stay with Iran. However, those two people groups, those uh, those two sets of uh, uh, Muslims, do not get along. So I'm anxious to see what Saudi Arabia is going to do and if they're going to allow America to use bases, if they ever had to. Hopefully, we won't. I don't want to send wars. I don't want to see another war there. But what if all of a sudden we had to strategically go over there? What if all of a sudden our special forces had to do search and rescues for Americans. Remember, it just reported that Arab countries in this area are stating, America, you are not using your locations here to cause an uprising with Iran. So they're, they're saying you can still use your bases, but if we see that you're using them for retaliatory attacks on Iran, we're shutting it down. So now we're getting more isolated, even in our own areas, in the Middle East that we built, that we put American soldiers and troops there. Iran is threatening those bases as well. So this is why I say, why, why are we building all these bases in these areas that people don't like us? We can't really defend them like we probably should. Look at Bagram, I mean, my gosh, in Afghanistan. So what is the next step? What are we seeing? Guess what the military just did? Report shows there was alerts sent out, US sent reinforcements to Middle East amid fears of Iran attack. What kind of reinforcements? They don't state. What are the reinforcements that they're sending over there? Also, new report shows that the U.S. Navy has parked advanced missile ships off Israel's coast, readying for this attack or possible response of attacks. So retaliatory or defense, what is it going to be? Arleigh Burke, class guided missile destroyer, has arrived just in time for this situation to help Israel with the proxies or with the fact of Iran's attack on Israel. So we're seeing escalation. Now, will anything come of this escalation? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I hope not. I really hope not. But the situation is, again, it's kind of like we have all these matches just laid out on the ground and we're just throwing sparks to see which one would ember and actually light. It's amazing that we, we, we set this up. We put our military in here. We turn around and, and we allow these proxies just to keep on happening. Israel, of course, is, is moving into to Rafa, handling the Gaza situation. The problem I have here is Iran gained power more and more and more under the current administration. They were also pretty strong in Obama's administration. We kept them at bay when it came to Trump and when he, of course, bombed Soleimani. Now, am I saying that we should be doing drone attacks? No. But what I am saying is we have to keep an order to the world. It does not take us actually putting our military in involvement across the world. But now because we have troops, we have uh, laymen, we have workers over there, what are we to do if all of a sudden this major attack, major attack happens? Are we going to have another Afghanistan removal where we're trying to withdraw thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people from these areas? And then, then it puts us in a catch-22 because now we're having to go in there with special forces to try to get these people out. 
that's what I, I feel like we put ourselves in these situations and I don't understand why we want to go to war so bad just for the dollar, just for power. Uh, whatever it may be, this is a dangerous time. And again, we're looking at the starts of World War III if we're not careful. And Iran's not really backing down. They are saying that they're not going to, to, to go in right now, but it's imminent. Israel is saying, look, we're, we're going to defend ourselves. So if you have two powers that are not backing down, what's the next step? Going back to the Russia situation with the missile, it says Russia just chose quite the wrong moment to conduct a test firing of a ICBM rocket from their southern air base. It says the rocket was reportedly seen soaring in the high atmosphere in parts of North Iraq and Iran. Triggering concerns was Iran is beginning to attack. Now, was it accidental? I, I don't know. Was it on purpose? I don't know. Here, here's what I'm saying. One misfire, one little issue, one accident, one wrong shot, one wrong movement could spark everything, could start a domino effect. I remember the relationships that Iran has with Russia, with China. So we have an imminent threat to Israel. We are now putting destroyer ships in that sea. What is the next step? And are we looking at World War III? It is crazy times out there, guys. So again, I, I tell you this every time we end these videos, because I don't want you to ever think that it's all about just trying to scare you or make you fear for, for what's going on. It's to tell you some things you can't help. But remember, the things you can help is you could be proactive with your own family, teaching them how to be safe, how to be careful, how to start preparing. To remember, hard times will come for America. Yeah, we're not seeing imminent threats. We're not having uh, people right now saying they're going to bomb us within 48 hours. But it could happen. Remember that the southern border is not protected. Remember, the northern border is not protected. So at any point in time, something could easily transpire. Are you ready for that? So prepare yourself, make sure you're preparing yourself. Also, you have to be spiritually minded to deal with this. If I read all these stories day in and day out and I shared it with you day in and day out and all this just went through my mind all the time, it would be depressing. I would be stressed, anxious, and depressed all the time. You probably stayed that way too if you did not have a groundedness with your moral fabric and with your values. Where it comes back to spiritually protecting yourself. Make sure that you are guided by God and, and Christ through this to say, you know what? No matter how bad it gets, I can't control everything, but I can control some things. And so the things I can control, I'm going to be proactive in. I get to see the sun, sunrise over this beautiful lake that I can't wait to fish today after we farm. I got to go fix a fence. I don't want to fix a fence, but I want to keep my cows in. It allows me to say, you know what? There are things that I can do that are proactive that keeps me busy, keeps my mind off that, and makes me thankful to not take the things I have for granted. My kids are out gardening with me. Yesterday, they'll be out gardening with me today because we're all in on gardening right now because it's the big season for us. That is what life's about. So the reason we make these videos is not to scare, to make you fear, to make you anxious. It's to make you think, okay, I've got to be thankful for what I have and what I can do to make sure they're kept safe. What I can do to help maybe make a better world for them to grow up in than the one that we're currently going in. So that's kind of why we make these videos. So please, Focus on the goods while understanding and why, having wise understanding of what's going on that are bad because it helps you prepare and be better. Guys, thank you so much for watching. You, it means the world to me that you stick with me day in and day out. And I hope that you'll share our videos. Comment below. Tell us what you think. Check us out on Twitter because we're sharing a lot more of these stories uh, throughout the day. And you're getting a lot more image, a lot more information uh, along with the videos too. Guys, thank you for watching. God bless. Happy homesteading, y'all.